Rats and Sex. Oh, I didn't even know that was a lead in right there. Johnny Mods. Who's that? Sandman. Can you explain the changes, if any, to the rat scene in the New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania indie scene from the time period in the early mid 1990s to the present? Are there as wow. many? Are they better or worse? Which state slash Fed has the best? There's a lot in there. Yeah. Take you, it. You, what's his name again? Johnny. Johnny, uh, you're asking. I wish. Uh, you know what? I should probably call somebody like, like Chris Chetty or Danny Doring right now, but. I, to me, I was never in the rat scene, as in, uh, I was coming to the ring with my wife, then I was, I always, I always had my wife around, whether she was with me or she was against me with Tommy Cairo, uh, even when I had woman there, and then I had Nancy there, and of course, as soon as, uh, not Nancy, I had uh, Missy there, and as soon as Missy came around, you notice my wife got there, so... <laughs> That'll tell you the story about of, about me with girls that I came to the ring with. But you get a lot of guys uh, that that ended up marrying the rats, like Joel Joel Gertner ended up marrying a rat. Um, Cronus and Cronus ended up marrying a rat to where the the what's it called the sonogram? What's the thing you do? My girl's sonogram for, to see the baby. It's not yeah, my girl's fine. Was the girl, the kid came back looking like. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know who, whose kid that was, but I tell you what, it went WWE from the stories that that I've heard. I mean, like this, the, like the seventies, eighties, not so much the nineties. I guess because girls, you know, there must have been a women's movement or, or something. But but the eighties, if you were Ric Flair, you were one of the four horsemen. Yeah, you were the man. All right, let's check it. Or you were too cold, Scorpio, and you had a yard and a half. The girls like that. All right, a video email, the Hess Express. All right, Hess. Hey, Sam, man, I want to know your best rap story and your craziest rap story. All right. The best rap story is... Wow, can I tell that one? All right, um... Wow. Hey, pal, in 100 years, we're all going to be dead. It's not going to matter. Go ahead. <laughs> wow. I just... Uh, where is she? Our friend. Oh, let's, put her, let's put her in the frame right now. I wouldn't call her a rat, but... Hey, Missy was the best. There's that. Put it this way. Everybody else in the business will call her a rat. I wouldn't call her a rat. Missy was the shit right then, I remember. We got a woman, uh, uh, Kevin Sullivan, got signed to um, WCW, $358,000 a year. I remember Kevin pulling me aside. I was telling you guys this earlier at dinner. He gave me like three pieces of advice. I remember one of the pieces of advice that he gave me, well, obviously one wasn't about his girls, but one of the pieces of advice he gave me was, he goes, he goes, make sure the promoters know that you don't need their money to be in their business because once they know that you feed your family on this business, then they're done. They, then they can do whatever the hell they want to do with you. Another one was, if you can be a heel and be cheered, then you're worth more money than the baby face that can be cheered. You know what I'm saying? So there's a couple little things right there, but getting back to my little honey right here, I'd like to blonde more more than she is. I'd like her right now. If she was here right now, I'd stick the cock to her. I just saw her and, um, look at you guys trying not to laugh. Of course you gotta laugh. Yo, Missy, she's gorgeous. Oh my God, can you imagine? Missy Hyatt, 1995 circa. Yo, this is like Joan Collins in like 2025. Missy Hyatt, 1995, was as hot as like Janet Jameson. What was the, the other piece of advice from Kevin? Uh, he told me about the money, he told me about the promoter, and I don't know, hopefully we'll get to the other piece. Okay. You were holding the Missy disc. Did it involve her? The third piece of advice? 
I, I can't remember. Maybe maybe we'll come across it. God damn, she was so good looking back then. Jesus Christ. Oh my. Uh, oh, oh, that's the story I gotta tell you. So, so we got Kevin Sullivan. He goes to a. Now, here's something a lot of people don't know. Kevin Sullivan ended up being part. Uh, uh, Paul Lee brought in Kevin Sullivan. So Kevin Sullivan ended up being part of Paul Lee's bridge to uh, Conan, to Rey Mysterio, to Psychosis, to Hoover too. So, so all these guys come in. Next thing you know, Conan and Kevin racing for, racing for WCW. Alright, well, we're talking again and killing the Academy. Oh, so yeah, so so Ke Kevin left his wife with me because uh, you know without it. Oh yeah, that's right. So this is when if you got if anybody remembers, this is when when Kevin got enough power in WCW, he brought Nancy there and Nancy came out with another girl who I forget what she was who she was, but came out with Benoit. And she used to scream the whole time she was out there. And she wore like a top hat and tails. Because she had to cover her fat ass, Nancy. You know I love you, babe. So then they ended up, the next week I ended up coming out with Missy. And then I remember being in, um, we were at this, the travel lodge in Philadelphia. And it's me, too cold. And uh, and Fonzie, and we're sitting at the diner across the street, and it's Taz. It's Taz and Perry Saturn are sitting on the other side of the diner. So I just remember, I remember telling Todd Gordon, I, I, I swear to God, I don't even believe in God, so I don't even know why I'm swearing. But I said that... I said to Todd and I said and I said to Fonz, I said I'm going back in that hotel and I'm fucking Missy Hyatt. So we were on the 16th. I think she was on the 14th. But meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, I sent the waitress over. It was us sitting in the front of the diner and it was Taz and Perry because those two were just fucking two fucking eight over ten of motherfuckers. <laughs> So I, I sent the waitress over to pay their bill and say something like, you guys are pussies or something. I'm paying their bill and fucking tell them to, I mean, because we were making good money back then, you know what I mean? We were all, I was making like 150, 175 a year, whatever. So they got all pissed at me then. Perry wanted to beat me up. Taz wanted to beat me up. But neither one of them wanted to come there because they know I'd take their eye out. So we go back into the hotel. The, oh, this is... Oh, this is great. So we go back into the hotel. I'm in I'm in oh four. Todd's got uh maybe Pony C in right there. He's got her washing down Scorpio or or doing something like that. I go down to Missy's room and I just remember premature ejaculating. I got on top, I don't know, I, I, I don't really remember, like, the, I don't know, I was probably, I was snoring shit back then, I don't know what I was on. Did you make it in the room? What do you, yeah, well, I didn't, so where pre, did you get there? You I didn't premature ejaculate in the, in the, uh, Well, she told hallway. us, uh, Jim Kelly, the quarterback, uh, just kissing her premature ejaculate, so you got in the room, this must be an effect she has on guys or something. Oh, well, you gotta understand, if you, it's like, here, here's the thing, it's like, Take Tara Banks, take the best looking girl ever, and that, or hey, how about um, how about Chris Candido's girl? What's her name? Tam. Take Tam. Tammy now almost looks like she did. Imagine her fifteen years ago, smoking fucking hot blonde. So I remember I just I, I got into a room I think I had a joint with me so we're going to join or something fucking snorting lines or whatever. You know, it's kind of like wiggled my way in on top of her before I even stuck it in or I came in her face. And I remember just going like this going, 
Ooh, it's salty. Sorry, miss. Excuse, miss. Anyone want to reach for the tissues for a minute? Go ahead. <laughs> um, 